All right, back to it now as we kick off this week. And look, uh, there's no issue bigger now. You look at all the polling, Gallup polling last week showed that for the first time since they asked the question all the way back in 1981, the border is the number one issue across this country. That's been shown in other polls, but for Gallup, it's the first time, and I find that significant. As a result, Donald Trump dominates in the polling against Joe Biden because people do not believe that the Biden administration is doing its job. And then you see terrible stories like the murder of Lake and Riley in the middle of the day on a Thursday while she's doing what a lot of young people do. She's out running. And she's brutally attacked and brutally murdered in the middle of a major American university campus, University of Georgia, in the middle of the day, in the middle of, of the country. And so I decided I wanted to talk to somebody who has a good feel for what's happening in the middle of the country. Mike Murphy is the sheriff, Livingston County, Michigan. He's joining me now. Sheriff, good to have you here. Yeah, great to be here, Steve. Good morning. So I, I, I wanted to put a, uh, I don't want the hype. I don't want, you know, one side or the other. I just want to talk to a sheriff who deals with crime, law and order every single day. No, tell me, that. tell me what your, your impression is. Is the border and the open border and the problems there impacting you and your department? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. And, you know, we thought uh, we would be immune to this being, you know, uh, Midwestern state and, uh, you know, center of uh, Michigan here in southern Michigan. Uh, but we're not. Uh, we just recently had a case uh, was a, handled by a local police agency, but it was the uh, criminal sexual conduct of a 15 year old by an illegal. Um, so w we are not immune to this. Um, nobody's immune to this. And, and frankly, I, I didn't know that uh, polling back to the 80s, uh, this was on people's mind. You know, I, I go way back. I've been with the sheriff's office for 33 years. I go back to a case that we had uh, probably in the early 90s. Uh, where there was an illegal that uh, had actually killed a person. It was it was accidental. It was a work uh, incident. Uh, OSHA came in. Uh, we did our investigation, called the uh, feds, and they said, yeah, thank you very much for letting us know. That was 25 years ago. So, you know, this is not anything new. It's just starting to finally resonate. Well, let me uh, ask you about that. Uh, th yeah. I, think th I think you've hit on a key point, okay? 25 years ago, you had an incident involving an illegal and you called the feds all right what was their response then compared to what would happen today if you called and there's an illegal involved with a crime whether it's csc or maybe it's drunk driving whatever it might be and you call uh the border patrol today or whomever you need to call at the federal level and say hey we've got this person we've got him incarcerated here in the livingston county jail what happened 25 years ago what happens today has it changed so no, it really hasn't changed. Uh, so 25 years ago, there was nothing because it was not criminal. It was deemed a work accident, nothing uh, malicious or negligent. Uh, so the person went on their way. Um, and I think I think you hit on a point where what a lot of people don't understand. You know, I get I get uh, my share of emails and phone calls saying, "Well, you're the sheriff. Go arrest these people. You're the sheriff. Do this. Do that." Well, <laughs> you know, I've got to act within the law as well. And the in immigration and that is a federal law, and we do not have the ability to enforce that. So I can go round up all the illegals I want, put them in the Murphy Marriott, and then what? The feds say, thank you very much. We're not going to come get them. Now I can be on the hook for false imprisonment. I can't, you know, I can't send them back. So it's, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge issue. And just to take that one step further, if there is criminal activity, it depends. So, for example, this case with the... 15-year-old uh, that was uh, sexually assaulted, uh, that person did receive, I think, uh, three to five or something like that in prison. They will be deported once they serve their prison term. So if it's something along those lines or the example you used earlier in Georgia, uh, that person will end up being deported. But if it's a, and I don't mean to minimize this, but if it's a simple drunk driving or a simple driving without a license or uh, a simple theft or that type of stuff, they just, the, the feds will say, thank you very much. Have a nice day. And never show up, and that's the end of that. So let me ask you, from where you stand, um, you would like to see that change then, it sounds like to me. You would like Congress to at least, because we have the same back and forth going on in Texas, as you well know. The governor there trying to say, look, local law enforcement, being the sheriff, the local police, should have the power to arrest the illegals and then have uh, 
state judges or local judges order their deportation. Congress could make that possible. They could give you the power as sheriff to do that. Would you like that ability? Yeah, we, we would love that ability. And frankly, I think the governor in Texas was right on point, right? You, you as a state uh, pass legislation that mirrors the federal law because obviously the feds aren't doing their job. Uh, and then that gives you the authority. So it, it takes the feds right out of it, right? Um, that, in my opinion, that was a great idea. Now it, it's uh, working its way through the court system and it continues to hit roadblocks. But, you know, that's the that would be a great solution until the feds uh, get off the rear end and, and, and change it. And you're absolutely right. It, it comes down to legislation in Congress. And, and frankly, I think there needs to be, uh, you know, there needs to be immigration law that says, hey, listen, if you want to come into this country legally, there's not many of it. Let's face it. There's not many of us here. If you go back generation over generation, there's not many of us that were truly Native Americans, right? Uh, we came from somewhere. Uh, German Irish is my heritage. So, uh, but it was through Ellis Island, right? It was done the right way. So you have a set of immigration laws that uh, allow that to happen. And then you have another set of immigration laws that say, hey, if you don't do it the right way, we just put you on a C-130, we'll throw a parachute on you, and we'll fly you back and drop you off. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty effective. I mean, yeah. Hey, hey, we're right over the target. That's about right. Open the doors. That's about right. That's yeah. about right, right there. Um, let me ask you this, because if you listen to people on the left, uh, and I don't want this to be political. That's the point. I want the actual impact on crime in your county. Do you see an increase in crime and crime? I mean, look. Millions have showed up, not as many in Michigan. I mean, we don't have the problem that they have in Texas or they have in other states, but we have it. We saw this just recently with a busload of illegals up in Traverse City, um, kind of a tourist town, northern Michigan. Here's 20 of them, drove them up all the way to the Canadian border, processed them and turned them loose in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Good luck. No housing, uh, no job, don't speak the language. How can that turn out in, in, a, in a good way? Well, it turns out good for them, frankly, because they get, you know, a stipend of two grand a month and a, a phone or whatever the number is, which, by the way, next time you uh, cash your check, take a look at the uh, take a look at how the how much you pay in taxes and then figure out how much you're paying for uh, these illegals. Again, I go back to the I go back to the C-130, but you're right. I mean, that's a disaster. So you, you've got folks coming from a uh, as a general rule a much much warmer climate now you're going to throw them up in uh you know northern michigan uh where the weather's this year's been a little bit different but the weather's not so nice they you just turn them out and in a way you go how can that not be anything uh but setting everybody up for a failure quite frankly yeah and it, you know as you point out too so the, you know now you've got what do these folks do for uh a living um, yes, you're living off the government dole for a little bit and can afford maybe uh, some housing or apartment or whatever. Uh, but a lot of those individuals will end up committing crimes. And yeah, it's long term because they, they, they have to survive one way or the other. Right. And we see right. this with shoplifting or break ins of homes or whatever it might be. Mike Murphy, Sheriff Livingston County, Michigan, hold that because I want to finish this conversation of the real impact of the open border on ordinary parts of America. Don't go anywhere. It's the Steve Gruber Show. I'll be right back.